Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayyuhal habibu fillah continue on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Ibn Rajab hafizallah ta'ala aw rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatan wasi'ah the Imam said as for clarifying the mistake of one of the scholars who erred in the past then if one observes good manners in his speech and does well in his refutation and response, then there is no harm upon him, nor is there any blame that he can be accused of. And if it turns out that he was misled by this past scholar's erroneous opinion, then there is also no harm or sin upon him. Then he said, when a statement would reach some of the Salaf that they rejected, they would say, this person has not spoken the truth. This example is taken from the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu As-Sanabil has not spoken the truth. And when news reached him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he issued a ruling that a woman whose husband passed away while she was pregnant was not permitted to remarry upon delivering her child but instead had to wait until four months and then and ten days had passed. The righteous Imams went to great lengths in forsaking the weak sayings uh, of some of the scholars and they refuted them with the highest degree of refutation as Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah Ta'ala used to censor uh, Abu Thor and others uh, in their opinions that they were alone in saying and he went to great extremes in refuting them in these opinions so it's very important that Ahlul Sunnah that this is from the Sunnah the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we realize and this is the Sunnah of Ahl Hadith and the Sunnah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah that Ahl Sunnah rad ba'dhum ala ba'd lakin ma rifq wal ihtiram. So this is very important. The Ahl Sunnah they refute one another uh, when they make mistakes. However, they do so. the The general way of doing so is with gentleness and with respect. And this is Ahabatafillah what we lack often, more than not, uh, to give uh, respect to one another when they're from Ahl Sunnah. And to be quick to take people off the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is not our right. That's not our haq. Our haq is the haq of the Muslim ala Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A Muslim akhl Muslim, you should do ba'dahu ba'dah. The Prophet ﷺ said the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim and they strengthen one another. They strengthen one another like a building. So how do you strengthen your brother when they make a mistake? You advise them. You don't automatically condemn them. But you do not accept their mistakes. Whether it's open or hidden, you, you should advise your brother. Or if it recalls for, for making the, the uh, refutation out in the public, then do so with ihtiram, with respect, and with gentleness, hoping that your brother will benefit from this advice, from the open advice. All of this relates to the outer and apparent matters. As for the inner matters, then if one's intention in doing that criticism is just to clarify the truth, and so that the people will not be deceived by the sayings of someone who erred in his opinions, then there is no doubt that this individual will be rewarded for his intention. And by doing this with this intention, he falls into the category of being from those who show sincerity to Allah, his messenger, the leaders of the Muslims, and the, their common folk. And this comes from the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, Adina nasiha, adina nasiha, adina nasiha, wa qalu liman, qalu lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasulihi wa li a'imatu muslimin wa a'amatihim wa li rasulihi. Uh, so this comes from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which has that same uh, that same meaning, that sincerity to Allah, His Messenger, and the leaders of the Muslims and the common folk. And it is the same whether the one who clarifies the mistake is young or old. So he has a good example in those scholars who refuted the weak opinions of Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma which have been declared irregular and which have been rejected by the scholars, such as his opinion regarding the muta, meaning the temporary divorce, or uh, in bartering, sarf, and umratain, and other than that. So these are some opinions of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which were opinions that the scholars rejected because it was from his ijtihad, not that he was going against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah or intentionally, but yet his 
uh, ijtihad went against the sunnah, either because, radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah, that he didn't uh, know the sunnah on that particular mas'ala, because it wasn't like everyone was all-encompassing of every hadith and every saying and every action of the Prophet sallallahu No one could be with the Prophet sallallahu at all times. And the Prophet sallallahu uh, different events took uh, place in the company of different individuals. So even some, even many sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, didn't know all of the statements of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa That's why they corrected one another when one of them would uh, make ijtihad <coughs> and be rewarded for that ijtihad, but yet the ijtihad might not be uh, accepted. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.